In May we finally got some warmer weather and the garden came to life. The night temperatures were still very low and we even had had some nights of frost. Tender plants like my dahlias, tomatoes and many seedlings still needed protection during the nights. The daffodils have finished flowering, so I put them somewhere out of sight, where they can die back slowly and store their energy for next year's performance. Hello and welcome to my garden. The daffodils have finished flowering, so now it's time for a summer display. And I've chosen for these beautiful white agathanthus. Now these two are a variety called Summer Love and they claim to flower all summer long. And the bigger one is called Leicester. And this one can cope with minus 10 degrees, as it is a deciduous one. And this one can cope with minus 5 degrees, but I'm not going to take my chances. So that's why I've planted them into plastic containers, so that I can easily lift them from the terracotta pots and put them somewhere frost free during winter. birthday in May, I decided to treat myself to a visit to the garden center. I was looking for some white agapanthus for on the terrace. These are already big healthy looking plants, perfect for my large terracotta pots. to the perennials. They have a huge collection, all placed in alphabetical order. There's nothing better than strolling along the paths searching for plants. I made a list of plants that I wanted to add to my borders, but I always end up with plants that weren't on that list, like these tiarellas. These are such beautiful spring plants with delicate soft pink flowers. I think these will look good in the shady corner of my garden. When I select my plants, I'm looking for plants with lots of buds and healthy foliage.
They have two varieties that I particularly like. One called Pink Bouquet and one called Spring Symphony that has a more peach tone. They are both stunning and I can't choose, so I pick three of each variety. The garden center has also lots of trees and shrubs. These rhododendrons look amazing, but too big for my garden. Besides plants, they also have a beautiful collection of garden furniture and home decoration. In the herb section I found a chocolate mint that I couldn't resist. It really smells like chocolate. This is most definitely one of the most beautiful garden centers. I felt like a kid in the sweet shop and couldn't have thought of a better way to spend my birthday. I'm very happy with all my new plants and I can't wait to start planting. Tiarellas are now happily growing in my garden. This corner of my garden has been my little problem area. It is in full shade and nothing grows here. But this year I decided to take care of it. I've added the hellebores that I had growing in a pot at Christmas and I've also added these tiarellas. Now this is a variety called Pink Bouquet and it has these lovely delicate soft pink flowers. I think they're really pretty. And I really love how their colors pick up on the colors of the faded hellebore flowers. I've also added a wood anemone and some wood rough. And I really like how these star-shaped leaves will cover the soil. And in spring they get these tiny white flowers that have a fantastic fragrance. These are all shade-loving plants. I really like how my little problem area has turned out and I think it's one of my favorite parts of the garden now. These are the tomatoes that I sowed in March and this is a variety called Costoluto Fiorentino. It is a beefsteak tomato and I've never grown this variety before so I'm really looking forward to taste it. Now I'm going to place them into this wooden box and it's an old fruit box and I've put a layer of freeze inside of it to keep the soil in. Now this has a really nice root system. So I'm going to plant them quite deep as you can see. And that is because that they will make roots on the stems.
As a companion plant, I'm going to use these calendulas. Calendulas attract bees, but repel white flies. Well, at least that's what I'm told. So if it works, I don't know, we'll see. And in goes the last one. So now I only have to give them a good watering. I will put these against the sunny wall of the house and then they can continue to grow on and hopefully I get lots of tomatoes this year. This look how the garden has come to life. The plants are growing so fast now. And behind me is a geranium called Mayflower. And I absolutely adore these blue flowers. And the bees adore them too. And I have a lot more varieties here for the bees, like these alliums over here. It is a variety called Purple Sensation. And I'm not sure if I like the color of them because I was hoping for more of a blue tone like these geraniums. But let me know in the comments what you think of them. And there's even a little GM popping up here. And this is a variety called Mai Tai. I absolutely adore this apricot color. And over here I have some more Nepitas and they almost start flowering. And you might think, why doesn't she remove these weeds in front of her? And that is because these aren't weeds. This is a verbena and they have self-sown. So I will dig them up and plant them out somewhere in the garden. Now that the weather is finally getting warmer, I take some time to drink a cup of tea in my favorite spot of the garden and just enjoy the flowers and bees. There's still a lot of work to be done in the garden, so I'm off to my next job. These are the cucumbers that I sowed at the beginning of April, and I want to plant them out into the vegetable garden, but I want to grow them against the trellis, and that's where the peas are at the moment. So for now they have to stay in a pot for a little bit longer, so that's why I'm going to plant them into a larger pot. Put these aside. And then I'm going to place them with the pot into the other pot and then fill around with compost. up with the space that's perfect size for this plant and I'm going to take this one out and 
then it fits perfectly. A little bit more soil around it. So there you go, nice little plant. So this is the last one. I will give these a good watering and then they can grow on. And when the peas are finished, I can plant them out into the vegetable garden. With the warmer temperatures, the garden is changing so quickly now. The alliums are now in full flower. I must admit that the more the alliums came into flower, the more I started to appreciate them. They add some color to the garden during a period that the other spring bulbs are finished and the roses aren't yet in flower and the bees absolutely adore them. I still had some zinnias that needed to be pricked out and planted into larger pots. As these were sewn into modules, it is easy to lift them and pop them in a pot with multi-purpose potting compost. If you haven't yet sown your zinnias, it isn't too late yet. With these warmer temperatures, they will germinate quickly. I will let them grow on until they have a healthy root system and plant them out into the garden. Give them a good watering after planting. Most of the spring bulbs have finished flowering, so it was time to change the plants on my side table. I like to stick to the white color scheme, with the dark green leaves of the ivy as a background. I've chosen four caliber covas with double flowers. I've also added some Irish moss. And finally I've added a tongue fern. Now you might remember the seedlings I had growing in my cold frame and now that there's no risk of frost anymore I was able to prick them out and plant them out into these small containers where they can grow on and create a healthy root system before they go out into the garden. Now I have a lot of different things growing in here. I have three types of zinnia mixes, one with a pink and cream color, one with apricots and one with orange and lime colors and these will all go out into a cut flower bed into the garden. And then I have a lot of cosmos in pinks and white and these will go out into the borders of my garden as well as the snapdragons and the amis and the dill um, as well as the allisons. 
And over here I have my calendulas that I grow as a companion plant for my tomatoes that are growing into containers. And I will plant a few into the vegetable garden as well. And then over here I have my butternut squashes and these will be planted out into a container as well. Now that we've had some warmer weather, my vegetables are doing so much better. Just look how everything has grown. And look at those peas. I think within a couple of days I will be able to harvest some of them. And finally my radishes are doing much better. And I think I can harvest some of them. Due to the cold weather, it has taken them 9 weeks to grow, which is 3 weeks longer than usual. But how rewarding it feels to finally be able to harvest some. Next week I will be harvesting more radish, peas and strawberries. And I will be planting my courgettes as well as more tomatoes. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you ever so much for watching and please subscribe to this channel for more videos. See you next time. Hello and welcome to my garden. The daffodils... Whoa. These two are a variety called neighbor. <laughs> it has a delicate tiny white blah 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 blah. <laughs> There's a plane and a car. I have... There's a plane. But this year I decided to take care of it. There's a car. Great. And I really think that my little problem area has turned out fine. And, bleh. and I really love how these star-shaped flower. Bleh. I've added dog. Off, off, off. And I really like how the wind. <laughs> and in spring they get these tiny white flowers that have a delicate fragrance, a fantastic fragrance, a delicate fragrance. And I've also added these tiarellas. And there's someone talking. Birdie. <laughs> Hello little birdie. This corner of my garden. <laughs> Birds. This corner of my garden has been my birds. And a car. And I really like how the star-shaped leaves will cover the ground of this soil. Cover the ground of the soil. And I've added the hellebores that I had growing in Chris. Bleh. And this is a variety called. What is it called? No idea. What is it called? Pink. Pink bouquet. Yeah. It is in full shade and nothing grows here. Nice. Great. Always nice. Nice. There's a lot of noise. I... Lots of noise. So this year I decided to take care of it. <laughs> Hello. A blackbird and a magpie. They're not friends. I think the blackbird has a nest over here. And the bees loves them. And the bees love them too. And... Blah, blah, blah. Now, oh, these are grasses. These not, are not over beaners. Behind me is a bleh. Behind me is a geranium called... I forgot what it was called. <laughs> That's quite a noisy blackbird. And I have a lot more varieties for the bees over here. This that's not good.
Just look how the garden came to life. The <laughs> Just car and a dog. Just look how the guy <laughs> birds. Car, motorbike. There's a dog barking. Looking forward to taste it. And I'm going to. <laughs> There's the dog. I've never grown this before. Bleh. And I'm going to plant them out into this wooden. Bleh, bleh. These are the cucumbers that I sowed at the beginning of noise. Can grow on, and when the peas are finished, I can plant them out into the bloody bloody blah. You might remember all the seedlings that I had in. <sighs> now that there's no risk of frost anymore. <sighs> yeah. And then I have some um blah, 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 blah. and then over here i have my button up you might one with pink and cream blah. and now that there's no risk of frost anymore there's a car screaming children you might Dat is echt geen doen. Ik denk dat ik s'nachts moet filmen. I'm able to prick them out and plant them. Put them into the vegetable garden as well. And there is a helicopter that's always nice if you when you're filming. Lots of noise. Let's quit.